Hey guys, um, just like last week, history this week is not required, it is optional. But I am going to really encourage you to watch the videos and do the activities as much as you can because we're learning about Martin Luther this week. Um, I was really, really looking forward to studying this with you guys and learning a little more alongside you guys uh, about Martin Luther. As you know, we've been studying him, um, we've been studying church history in my church on Wednesday nights. We just got into Martin Luther. Um, we've had to take a pause on that because we're not able to meet together. Um, but there's so much history, there's so much important stuff to know about Martin Luther. Um, uh, the, the Reformation changed the course of the church um, in history, and he had he played a huge part in that. Um, so I really, really would like you guys to watch the videos and do the activities as much as you can. Um, I have one activity that I really want you to do, um, and then I'll post a couple, probably a couple YouTube videos um, with a little more information, and uh, I'll also do a reading a video of reading like I did last week um, but let's go ahead and get into the card which is on Schoology this is a picture of Martin Luther um, so let's go ahead and get into it you can follow it along follow along on the card that I post a picture of uh, so Martin Luther begins the Reformation 1517 uh, the uh, the date for this October 31st 1517 uh, actually, um, we celebrated in my church the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther uh, nailing the 95 Theses um, a few years ago, uh, and we actually referred to Halloween because October 1st is Hall October 31st is Halloween, but we like to refer to it as Reformation Day and celebrate what Martin Luther did on that day. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the card. On October 31st, 1517, a troubled young monk named Martin Luther posted what we call the 95 Theses on the door of the Wittenberg Castle. Yes, I know it says it looks like Wittenberg, but we actually, in, in German, they pronounce the W like a V, so it's pronounced Wittenberg. The document was written in Latin and included 95 points. It called into question the sale of indulgences by the church. And indulgences were things that people, they could buy their way out of purgatory, according to the church. Um, they could pay for these things, um, pay their way out of purgatory, basically, which is very wrong. And Martin Luther recognized that and called that into question. Unwittingly, the reformation of the church had begun. Martin Luther did not intend on this huge change. He just wanted to call these things into question and and, uh, and make the church answer these questions that he, he was saying, these things are wrong, they're an unbiblical, and he wanted to address them. He did not think it was going to cause this huge reformation, uh, but this did. This, this one event sparked so much... Um, speculation of the church and uh, people started questioning the church. Remember, they were able to read their Bibles now in their language um, and really study it and know what was biblical and what was not and what was obedient to God and what was being obedient just to the church and possibly even um, sometimes unbiblical. It went against what the Bible said and people were really starting to question it and this one event started a whole ripple effect on people and on the church, even as we know it today. Continuing to read. In many respects, the movement was related to and followed the earlier teachings of Wycliffe and Huss. It stressed sola fide, faith alone, sola gratia, grace alone, and sola scriptura, scripture alone. These positions were in direct opposition to the Roman Catholic Church's teachings that faith plus works was necessary for salvation. So these things were saying, no, it is faith and grace alone that saves us. There's no work. There's no work that we can do that can save us. And then scripture alone, meaning we only follow what the scripture says. You cannot add to it. You cannot say these things just based on 
uh, tradition. It's scripture alone that we find uh, God's word. No, no one can add to it or take away to it, take away from it. In 1520, so three years later, Rome threatened to excommunicate Luther if he did not recant his positions. Recant means to take back or uh, take it, take it away, and basically change his mind. He refused to recant and was excommunicated. He was kicked out of the church. At the Diet or Assembly of Worms, held in 1521, he was asked again to recant. He asked for 24 hours to consider his answer. The next day, he gave his famous answer, indicating that he, bound by God's word, could not recant. He said, I cannot take this back because it is what God's word says. I can't change what I believe. I can't change what God's word says, so I will not recant. Luther's courage caused many others to join in, and the reformation of the church had begun in earnest. So there had already been some things through John Wycliffe and John Huss that had started to stir people up. But this one thing, based on uh, the uh, what Martin Luther started teaching and his courage to stand before the church and say, no, I will not take back what I said because I believe it. That encouraged so many people and the church, was the re- reform in the church was really starting. Um, there were more and more people that, that, that started bringing things up in their churches and people started to have more courage and really recognize that a lot of the things that were being taught in the Catholic Church were unbiblical. They were wrong. Um, and, uh, and Martin Luther had a lot to do with that. So like I said, this week history uh, is not required, not grading anything, but I am encouraging you to do it. You're going to learn a lot. Um, and it helps us be grateful for people like Martin Luther that stood um, and had courage to bring about change in the church. And because of people like that, we have the churches that we have today. We have the Bible. We can read it. We can study it. Um, And we know that we are saved by faith alone because of God's grace alone, um, because of people like Martin Luther. So um, you don't have to do the worksheet. You can do it if you want. You don't have to turn it in. You can if you want. I won't be grading it. Um, So just do what you can. Um, But I I really think that if you uh, do history this week and pay attention to the videos and the activities, you're really going to learn a lot.